welcome to Attack of Opportunity. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Attack of Opportunity. We are, well, we're just talking to some Americans. Nothing wrong with that. They are 50% of our fan base, and we are, well, there's Pathfinder, there's 5th Edition, there is, now we play a lot of Pathfinder here at the Rollmongers Network, but that doesn't mean I have to exclusively interview Pathfinder people. Yeah, I like to. And we do have a whole segment. We also have a segment, sort of a hands across the water, where I hunt down international gamers. So you get a taste of New Zealand coming up, uh, a taste of Scotland, Britain, which you've already heard in some of our other shows. But today we're talking to Americans. So <laughs> <laughs> please welcome to the show two lovely, lovely ladies that I have here in front of me today. And we're going with some pen names, which is very, very cool. Dre Silvertooth on the left of your video screen, and Leanne Rose. Thank you so much for being on the show today. <laughs> Thank you for having us. We yeah. really appreciate it. Uh, I, I got to ask, uh, whenever I see the name Rose and we happen to be broadcasting anything, I always think of the World War II Japanese-American legend, Tokyo Rose. Is that any kind of homage towards her? No, I, it is just a coincidence. <laughs> oh, okay, well, um, I won't get into a huge backlog story because we already discussed it um, off the air here. But guys, wiki, Google, Tokyo Rose, who she was, what she did during the war. It's really, really cool about sort of a Japanese propaganda war machine that the American GIs thought was awesome instead of being afraid of. And she became a living legend and uh, lived in America, ran to Japan during the war forcibly she doesn't like she wanted and then came back and you know re retained a love for both countries and dual citizenship and her broadcast actually helped both sides or thought they did uh and i just i thought it was a great broadcasting story but we have the, the soon to be legend leanne rose hopefully a little help <laughs> both these ladies are coming here today if you check out the icon top corner from the bad heroes podcast that is definitely an interesting name <laughs> and, and we will get talking about the podcast but first the question that we always love to ask everybody when they come on the show is how did you first know you were a geek a nerd one of us one of us <laughs> ladies well first of all um so to quote Janet from The Good Place, Dre here is not a lady. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> but I am a lady. Um, um, yeah, it's true. Uh -huh. um, mm -hmm. Go ahead. But uh, oh, so how did I first become a nerd? I don't know. I think I just always was, uh, you know, since ever since I was a little kid, I was playing video games, started with the NES um, in 64, uh, loved playing Legend of Zelda, um, and then I think my earliest memory of the internet was those like little CDs of the AOL um, trials. And so got on AOL and there were these um, like text-based role-playing games, MUTs, and, you know, really got into that um, and was involved in building a few of them. And, um, but not really tabletop games until, until meeting Trey. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, we're both actually really new to tabletop games. Mm -hmm. um, I did. Uh, I played a lot of video games forever. I have the Sega Genesis and an N64 that I still own and still play. Um, played like a lot of Zelda games, um, and then I really fell in love with like kind of sandboxy role playing when I was playing Oblivion, um, and then later Skyrim. Uh, but like, really, just fell in love with the idea that like you can make a character. And they can be anything and they can do anything. You can make an assassin, you can make a thief and like you can spec for that and play that. And that was so cool to me. That was such a like unbelievable revelation. Um, and I just fell in love with that idea. And then uh, I played like strategy uh, um, board games but never like tabletop role playing games but really, really wanted to. I just didn't know anybody who played them. Um, and I sort of thought like, okay, I have to wait till I meet someone who knows, because the rules are kind of daunting, you know, for Pathfinder or Dungeons and Dragons or for anything, the rules are really daunting. So I just thought, okay, I'm gonna wait and eventually I'll make a friend. And then eventually I got tired of waiting and I was like, you know what, forget it. I'm gonna buy a book, I'm gonna read it, I'm gonna learn how to play and we're all gonna play. Like none of us know how to play and we're gonna figure it out. Um, and- uh, Cool, and how, long ago really, how long ago was that? <laughs> that, was, that was probably like two Thursday. Years ago. What? No. Thursday. <laughs> it was actually this morning. <laughs> I figured it out today. Uh, no, probably, probably like two years ago, I bought a uh, like the Pathfinder beginner's box that has like a little 
a little dungeon crawl. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and yeah, we, we did the little intro one. Yeah, we mm -hmm. sat down and we were like, it's dungeon crawl time. And we were like, okay. And there we are, just used like the pre-made characters are, that came with yeah, the yeah, There yeah. are three goblins in here. <laughs> um, oh, and we yeah. Played that, yeah, we played that beginner box like six times and we were like all right these are the ways you can fight the goblins it was really fun mm -hmm. no no hey hey like my first time like we were uh in a band and our drummer had to come up from toronto and when we weren't playing you know our basis was like so we have four hours to kill you know and they were passing a dragonlance novel around the car and i was like oh what's this and they're like oh you know you like fantasy sci-fi oh yeah yeah dad watches doctor who and you know i know conan barbarian i love that stuff they're like here read this and we have a game that goes with it. I'm like, oh, cool. And then, you know, got roped. But that's my interview story, not your interview story. Thank so uh, go move, moving on, because we got a double down. We, we're doing a double header today. Um, was there, like you, you meant, like, I've heard Oblivion a lot. I've heard Zelda games a lot. Sure. As, you know, but, but was there something in the beginning um, that took you away from the norm that you could label as your gateway drug to get into this? Was it the video games? Was it, you know, cosplay, cosplay card game, a movie? For me, it was certain movies that I saw as a kid mm -hmm. and just like, wow, what is this? You know, was there something, Yeah, something to blame for was... really for how you turn out? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I think it, it was like, like that. Um, those like choose your own adventure books. Um, so like, I, I think I like found a couple at a book fair once uh, and just like read them and then like would die and then flip back a few pages and like pick a different path, die again. Oh, you know, <laughs> like, I, that, you know that, is, that is not an uncommon answer. I think I have at least four I guests that say, choose your own adventure book. And I was like, yes, mm -hmm. those are so cool. You know, yeah. and you don't die. You just go back a couple pages. Well, no, I didn't really didn't mean to make that uh -huh. choice. You know, mm -hmm. <laughs> you're like, well, I was just checking it out. Right yeah. back. But um, but I think that was definitely my first exposure to uh, fantasy as a genre and, and also the idea of this like nonlinear way of storytelling. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, I um, they were too real well written for because I was very young when I picked one up. And I remember this one scene where you were supposed to get one of these master swords. And I didn't know what a, a um, Boken was the actual wooden sword. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And that was the correct choice because it was made by the master. To me, it was a stick on the wall and I'm grabbing everything that's steel and dying. And it's like <laughs> I couldn't figure it out. I kept going back and it was like mm -hmm. you're supposed to pick up the wooden sword. And, ha -ha. You know, I'm like, I'm not going to beat this guy with a stick. We're, mm -hmm. You know, like I'm used to Conan, you know, type of thing. Um, and it taught me two things. First, to keep an open mind, to not let anything that I've already learned about fantasy and sci fi actually channel you into a certain way of thinking. And second, that you can kick ass with a stick. So, you know, at least, at least by the end of the novel. Um, anyway, sorry, Dre, same question for you. Was there, you know, can we blame something? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is, can we blame a particular Yeah, thing? no, I just. Um, this is maybe an unconventional answer, but like, I was just so excited by everything. Like, I, I am so excited by stories. Um, and I always have been, and I, I can't imagine not being that way like i can't I, I don't understand when i meet people and i'm like what are you into and they're like i don't know like beer like nothing and i'm like what how <laughs> because there are so many cool games and stories and video like i i genuinely don't understand how everyone isn't like beyond excited about something in the sort of like nerd uh genre um so I, it's I, really fun it, yeah, it's yeah. So I, I, do, I, yeah. Do you remember the '90s? Have you seen a Harry Potter movie where the whole world went, yes, "What yes. is this?" And they're yes. all British, you know, but they're not the Empire, Amazing. you know. Like, no, it's uh, no, that's good. That's great. Um, so, technically speaking, uh, how long have you guys been, you know, gamers, like playing a video game or playing t tabletop for like mm. X amount of years, or has it been for? It sounds like forever for you guys. Yeah. I mean, like, since I was probably... Since there were games. Since yeah. Were games, like, probably, like, seven or, <laughs> seven or eight years old. Yeah. I this yeah. this I, is I, not I, an age crack, okay? <laughs> I'm just saying. You know, you're in the uh, beginning, you know? In, in the beginning. Um, uh, yeah. uh, like, my, my cousins um, had, like, gaming systems. I remember that the year the N64 came out, and, like, I was, like, in a game store with my cousin, and like we played the very first demo of like um, 
the the Mario game for N64. And he was like, I must have this. <laughs> and like his excitement was just contagious to me. And like, and he did end up getting it for Christmas. And I played it and then I wanted one and then eventually got one. Oh yeah, no, like the rest is history. That's the coolest thing about t um, tabletop games is you're not you're not playing Monopoly and eventually it becomes a grind and you're just bored because oh yeah, mm -hmm. the one guy's winning. Uh, it is a group <laughs> it is a group win. Group group wins the end, you know. Yes. And if you get in this, and you get in the mentality that the DM is there to share the story and not just mm -hmm. kill you, uh, you know, it's not it's not players versus DM. A lot of the mentality. Um, I remember Nintendo sixty four. Like we played Goldeneye. Yes, you know, the we literally right? have that. And yeah. mm -hmm. and um, it got so bad that we had eight people over two two sets of games and two systems, <laughs> and uh -huh. we decided to make it a drinking game. So everyone would play, <laughs> and if you die, you go to the rookie table or the rookie television, right? And these TVs are like little 19 inch, like we are on a couch squinting, you know, mm -hmm. and it's cross. And we just think it's the greatest thing because it's co-op, mm -hmm. right? And then there's the professional guys that, you know, that go up there. Uh, and what we found in the end, and after a couple of beers in us, that there was pretty much two guys in the middle, me and one other guy that would win one, lose one, and kept switching places where mm -hmm. there are three guys that are really good, three guys that were just like, tee James Bond. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when, when, when you when you those games the graphics like when you turn the guy would go around the room like this like it just <laughs> it was hilarious <laughs> um, we actually played that game yesterday and we got dizzy because we were like oh my gosh <laughs> so, yeah <laughs> so good um so now, now my next question and you you will forgive me if i suddenly disappear but i do i do want you to answer this because if something... you disappear well there, there's, some, there's something loud going on inside my studio that i must silence oh, okay. um but uh don't worry i'll, I'll watch this play but everyone's listening just, just ignore that part um, <laughs> um we're your host now <laughs> our, our, our rpgs themselves uh please tell me how long you've each been playing like you get into the rpg video game or the mm. rpg aspect how long mm -hmm. you've been doing that now we've mentioned zelda and oblivion but mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people are like oh, okay that's a while back like how is that you know 80s 90s well you know can you give us okay the idea right. you know how we're talking 30 hard yeah. years of gaming <laughs> like what do we do what do we do <laughs> yeah. so i'd say about 15 years of that if you mm -hmm. count like the the text-based role-playing games mm -hmm. uh the multi-user dungeons mm -hmm. um yeah like I, and i've played everything from like the hack and slash dungeon crawl style mm -hmm. games uh, which were really, I feel like, a precursor to WoW. Uh, I remember yeah. when the MMOs came out, people in the MUD communities were just like, oh my God, like, it's the end times. Like, everyone's going to play. <laughs> it's, with, all, it's all with, over now. But, but the funny <laughs> thing is, I feel like the text-based games have been making a comeback. Um, yeah, yeah. And, uh, but that's a story for another time. But what about you? What was your first? <sighs> first, like, role-play game. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I guess probably like probably the stuff that I've I've mentioned, um, late '90s Zelda stuff, mm -hmm. um, and then you know I had kind of a I didn't have like updated gaming systems or anything for a while, uh, and then yeah, Oblivion. There was not a lot in between. Yeah. Did you me. play WoW for a bit? Oh, I did. I played yeah. WoW, yeah, mm -hmm. for a little bit. Um, I played. I would like habitually play the first twenty levels of the game, and then you have to like kill a lot of things in a row and I got bored. <laughs> uh, but I would make like different characters and be like, so cool, I live in this cool area. I'm very story based when I play role playing oh, games. Oh yeah, so. yeah, yeah. But like Oblivion I, cheated, like it really is heroin for two reasons. Mm -hmm. First of all, Patrick Stewart, the man himself, the legend, is the king <laughs> and he just turns to you and they do that zoom in on his face before you get to mm -hmm. choose your character class. Like you're, you're a prisoner and you're the king and make yeah. way for the king. And, and we just happen to have a way out. And you're like, I was like, damn, I could have escaped this entire time. King's like, excuse me, we're just gonna use this secret door over here. And you're like, oh damn. <laughs> yeah. And then they make you go with them, right? You go down the dungeon, all this stuff happens and you, ha mm -hmm. you get a taste, you know, a little punch, a little kung and a little foo. And then <laughs> the king's like, you know, I, I've dreamt about you. And it's like, oh, oh my, it's so sudden, your majesty. I, you know, no, no, buy no. Buy me a drink. What? Yeah, 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 really, buy me dinner. Oh, pick my character class? Okay. But Patrick Stewart just leans in and he's like, so, you know, you're the chosen one. It's like, yes, I am. I I will play this game again. And, again, you know. and then you get to the first, the first dungeon and there's that little log trap. The little wire, very first, you know, that rolls down. Mm -hmm. And I've said this before in interviews. It's like I spent hours just resetting and going back and like watching the logs <laughs> roll, getting ahead of them, you know, trying to look behind me, <laughs> jumping backwards, you know, just just playing around because the idea that there was a mm -hmm. physical, real time 
Not not like, mm -hmm. oh, you found a trap, or oh, pff, damage, what was that? You literally see the wire break, and the logs roll, and it just, oh, that just abused me no end. And it really I mean, makes me seem like a simpleton. No, it was cool. <laughs> it's very no, cool. I, mean, I, I feel like I've logged a crazy amount of hours playing Oblivion. I actually um, got Skyrim, and it was the last year I was in college. Um, and I was like, I played it for like a day, and I was like, I can't play this or I won't graduate because I love this so much and had to like hide it from myself until I graduated because I was like, I can't have this. I'll just play Skyrim. <laughs> for like weeks and then not graduate so oh yeah no yeah, no but... the the uh the i love the the thief arc you go through the thieves guild and you end up being batman and you talk to the the goddess of thievery and everything and it's like <laughs> here's the ultimate skeleton key that'll open everything or you can have they showcase like this batman armor or you can have this and i'm like yes <laughs> yes please i want to be batman <laughs> and running around yeah I, I i feel logged a lot of you know I'm, I'm pretty sure that um that pets and and job and things were unattended while that game was hot on the market <laughs> from me too uh -huh. there's a there's a meme which i really like that's like skyrim oblivion and it's like uh it's like at the end of every like guild quest and it's just a guy sitting there like, I guess I'm in charge now. <laughs> like, I guess this is mine now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, and all the arrow in the knee bit. Like that mm -hmm. that, that troped good. a lot. But uh, anyway, sorry. Um, so now, you know, you're knee deep and you're just loving the culture. And today, you know, it's chic to be geek and all this stuff. And you're just buying into the, you know, and playing. But you're having a good time. So eh, you know, who cares? Then something happens and you want to stop consuming and start creating content making your own stuff or finding something and doing your version of it so the question that everybody loves i call it question four but you know what made you guys decide that you want to start making your own content and become a content creator on the web it's a good question yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um well uh i'm a writer by trade and so mm -hmm. is leanne um and so I think when I started playing Pathfinder, just like with friends at the table, I was like, oh my gosh, the storytelling potential here is awesome. Like I was just in love with it. And, you know, we played some pre-made stuff and eventually I was like, you know what? I really want to write my own thing, but it's going to take so much time and so much work because I want to do it right that I don't want to do it for just an audience of the four people at my table. I want to do it for everybody. Um, and that was kind of, that was kind of how the decision was born is I was like, man, I want to make a really cool story out of this and I want to share it. And I think I can. Um, and mm -hmm. that's, that's how we ended up making our show. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and we were inspired by like the actual play podcasts that mm -hmm. were already out there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, the adventure zone, I super love, um, bombarded is really fun. Mm -hmm. The broadswords I've listened to a little and really enjoy. Mm -hmm. um, and, and also audio dramas in oh, general, yeah. like audio hello from the magic tavern. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Oh yeah, no, uh, yeah, I, I don't know. One. Yeah, yeah. Uh, do you guys know yeah. the Glass Cannon podcast? Have you heard the Good Word Sisters? I, the Glass Cannon podcast <laughs> is, is. Sorry, I, that's, this, I got to bring them up. I just love those guys. Uh, we, I actually listened to Pathfinder Academy, which I think are the same guys, or at least one of the same guys, um, and uh, to, to try to learn the rules. But yeah, I've been meaning to listen to to the Glass Cannon. I haven't yet. It's on the. I, yeah. I should. It would help with the rules. I feel. Well, <laughs> for me. A lot of people say like, "Where do I start? What's out there? Is it all?" Mm -hmm. Just because it's an actual play, people approach it very, very differently. Like you said, there's yes. one that's more of a theater of a mind. Some are like really big on the rules. Um, mm -hmm. Some just play very uh, what I'd call raw, sort of a mic in the middle of the room, and they don't really, mm -hmm. they don't really think that there's an audience. They just play, and it's almost like you're in the doorway, little brother going. Uh, can I play with you guys? No, can I, you know, right. they're, playing, they're playing, they're playing, they're playing. Um, and then there's overproduced, there's overdramatic, there's heavy on the mic, there's all, oh, sorry, no, mm -hmm. that's just me. Right. R -r most people do it, <laughs> most people do it right. Um, <laughs> but you will uh, sample, 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 you know, because the mm -hmm. very first podcast I heard back in the 90s put me off. I was like, mm -hmm. no, this isn't, you know, this is not this is yeah what is what is this you know and my own my own childhood of growing up listening to like the sunday night funnies george, george carlton and a whole bunch of uh cosby stories and and um dr demento and all this stuff where even cheech and chong had a um a show that they would air and it were these skits and there was ambient music there were sound effects and there mm. was um characters to be played that these guys were doing as a comedy bit and it spoiled me for someone that was just trying to make an mm -hmm. honest go. Nothing wrong with their show, but you know the mm -hmm. technical was off, 
or you know there wasn't you know and i'd been spoiled with this high-tech overproduced kind of content so the first time i heard a um podcast i believe it was the penny arcade i was like Mm. is this guy's talking like what is no no and you know (laughs) i walked away and i shouldn't have because 20 years later i came back and i absolutely love doing this I even, I even, mm-hmm. you know, convince myself, my friends, my wife. It's like, hey, if I won the lottery tomorrow, I'd still be doing this. This is what I would do all the time. Then, and you know, mm-hmm. money would take care of itself. Because <laughs> um, it's just so much fun. Like um, people also ask, um, you know, how hard work is it, or what do you do? What do you? It's like I am exhausted, but I'm having the time of my life. So mm. yes, yeah, you I know, agree. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yes. Um, but that's in depth like not everyone tries to go at it like a network with several shows like you said you guys sure. could, you guys could play once a week once a month once a mm-hmm. something one mm-hmm. hour and you know into your phone into your snowball into your whatever and put it up there and it's just like there it is Ta-da. you know if you're just happy mm-hmm. to mm-hmm. make a legacy or put something on the net going this is what i'm right. doing it does not <laughs> have to be overblown or overthrown um that's just you know your personal choice so um you guys were talking about inspiration from Adventure Zone and yeah. some of those, whatever. <clears throat> and like I said, you, you you guys went from, to go from the basic box to <laughs> content creating over, that's impressive. Like that is just we're, like, we're, are, we're, are you guys us. prone to rash decisions or just kind of yes. like? Oh, yes, um, this is very no, on brand. We, this is, anyone who knows this would be like, ah, yes, of course they did. Because <laughs> when we decide we're gonna do anything, we always immediately do the most difficult, most challenging, like worst version of it instantly. Like we hadn't been camping as adults. My first time camping was (laughs) with Dre. And we we were like, you know what? Cause I went as as a kid and I was like, I know how to camp, we can do this. Mm -hmm. Um, I was like, no problem, like whatever. And we ended up like in the middle of the desert with like not enough water. And I was like, kicking down dead bushes for firewood because we didn't bring firewood because we were like, we're flying fire. Yeah, no, this is extremely on brand for us. We do this. Oh, uh, <laughs> so they, <laughs> they survived the desert and now they're yeah. bringing you a podcast. Man, that's impressive. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm going to, I'm going to skip, I'm going to skip my anecdote where like me and ex-girlfriend decided we could go hiking. We hit the Bruce trail, which is like Algonquin park. If you find it mm. North of Toronto and it's a, it's a trail. But, you know, oh, well, we got rained on. Well, didn't we see a sign that says, you know, like, get off the trail and find a bed and breakfast? And do, and we just we just backed up three days and went there and like, oh, hot meal. Oh, thank you for the uh-huh. Christianity pamphlets to, to sell us to something <laughs> cultish in the middle of, the, you know, because um, it, it was just regular, you know, have you heard the good word, but the locale. Uh-huh. You know, like you I play enough of those uh, video games where, like, you know, you're mm-hmm. kind of off the grid, and you know, yeah. they, this is the way we do things around here. Kind of video game that, <laughs> that we were there, and we're crammed into this tiny bed, but it's like, ah, oh, we dried all our clothes in a real laundry machine. We're gonna have a real breakfast tomorrow, you know. Uh-huh. And and they had and this they're... real, they had this real no syrup until you read the pamphlet kind of approach to. Oh man. Okay. Mm-hmm. You know, but I see, I see they didn't harvest your organs. And that's no, what I like to hear. no, no, because I got down on my knees and I prayed for that syrup. I'm telling you, <laughs> dry pancakes, you know, you know, it's not, it doesn't probably do a good call. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so anyway, <laughs> um, for you guys to have the guts to like the desert, really, <laughs> I can't get past that. Well, You're kicking down well, this bush, you know. <laughs> I saw, we, I saw CSI Nevada, and they were always getting stranded in the desert. Yeah. Like, that's harsh, man. Uh, it, <laughs> we started in the forest. It was a two-day camping trip. Day one was very pleasant. It was pine, pine forest, and there was plentiful wood and everything yes. that we needed. And then on the way down, we were like, all right, mm-hmm. let's let's uh let's stop like there's another there's place this on other the way. campsite and, and you know and then you know give it a couple hours and it's dark and i'm walking around and i'm like the wendigo's gonna eat me i swear and i'm trying to find <laughs> i'm trying to find like plants that are already dead so i'm not killing plants but also like she's trying to cook food so i'm trying to like that was a nightmare it was a, it was really fun, Still fun. oh yeah no i i, I could see totally free you know you, you just polite go a, a polite distance off camp to pee and someone's going, yes. where'd you go? Where'd you go? But all you hear and you're in your um, doing your business <laughs> paranoia is when to go, when to go. Ah, it's coming to eat me. You know, that kind of thing. That's an exact portrayal of how it was. Uh, something like that. Um, so anyway, um, I, 
Uh, yeah, next is <laughs> trying to get back to the questions here. Um, <laughs> where where do you guys actually create the content? Where does the magic happen? Are you guys have a studio? Or are you in a basement? No. Or are you in mom's apartment? You know, the classic dining room table with mics all around. You know, how do you guys get? How are you set up? Um, we are in Colorado, mm -hmm. uh, okay. but our players are remote. So um, Jake is in California. Uh, Kaz is in Arizona and um coolness is in washington mm -hmm. oh yeah um and uh oh and lisk is also in arizona so yeah. we have we have like a spread of people mm -hmm. and everyone records at home <laughs> yep with their uh fairly basic uh mic setup mm -hmm. uh, oh, okay yeah. except coolness coolness has oh, got like a yeah. legit coolness is a twitch streamer so he's yeah. got like a good setup twitch streamer home. voice actor so he knows yes. what's up he's All got right. he's got the good yeah. stuff Right on, right but the on. Rest are, yeah. The rest of us peons are just uh, yeah. you know, I, scraping by. I, I like to, like, sometimes in my mid-up, I'm like, I'm in a blanket fort. Welcome to the mid-up. Because I literally am in a blanket fort when I record often with, like, yes. a comforter. And That's it's awesome. just me. But, it, but it's not video. Like, it, it's just audio. It's a podcast, right? right? So yeah. they, they don't. Just audio. Mm -hmm. So the yes. blanket fort now is revealed. Every time they hear yes. the voice, they're going to picture s'mores yeah. and comic books in a flashlight and a, and a show no that oh that's no no that's you know we're making a yeah. list here never podcast yeah, without yeah. your s'mores your blankets and your, okay yeah. yeah exactly that is never, awesome never never do it um <laughs> so i got a quick question a technical question um when you guys all call in what do you use so we use Zencaster right now um and then we also everybody records like a file independently on their machine as like a backup Mm -hmm. um but we we use discord uh, zencaster we're kind of trying to find something that works um mm -hmm. zencaster is great at removing room noise uh which we desperately need because we mostly have like mm -hmm. um, no we we, snowball mics, we but... used it for uh dice for dishonor for a while okay mm -hmm. oh, I've, I've used zencaster mm -hmm. uh, yeah. um... the problem we run into is the audio drift i don't know if that happened to you but like when when any of the players like pcs get a little bit overworked um, then people start dropping out and then like then and then the file just slowly starts getting out of sync yeah <laughs> yeah it makes editing a bit of a nightmare it, it yeah five tracks it is it is a nightmare nothing against the, the platform but i think it's designed for more of a talk show like one to three as yeah, soon sure, as yeah. soon as you start playing around with four five six tracks or whatever mm -hmm, and like yeah. you said and you, people are different you know the different um like you said, the, the delay and whatever. Now, mm -hmm. Zencaster, to its credit, records the audio for each person on their computer at the source. Yes. Mm -hmm. And that's no, awesome. Yeah. But then you find their microphones are far more sensitive and you can hear every little scratch, every little scratch, mm -hmm. every little <clears throat> that you wouldn't normally get coming through. You know, so it has its ups and downs. We're not knocking it. We've mm -hmm. tried it, you know. Mm -hmm. No, uh, and not, we use know. it and it yeah. really yeah. has helped. I mean, the room noise yep. edited those is amazing. Um, yeah. Shout out to Michael Kasevin, Dead Aussie Gamer, who you can find on Twitch and Twitter. And he introduced me to Zoom. And it's a free chat client. And again, it sources the computer as opposed to a Skype call, which clouds and is, sounds very tinny. So we're in a Zoom call right now. And mm -hmm. uh, you get like 45 minutes free. Or I actually pay the the 12 bucks or a month or whatever, um, 14 bucks Canadian, to have uh, like unlimited hosting. But this, this program does so much. I mean, for starters, it has a green screen uh, aptitude. And uh, even if you don't have a green screen, I, I'm going to show you a little behind the scenes action here. Okay, everyone, are you ready for mm -hmm. this? Watch this. Um, I've recently changed the uh, the studio around, so I, I'm having lighting issues. That's why these aren't pox and green showing up on my face. This is a, this is a <laughs> lighting problem. But if I kill, so you guys can see mm -hmm. the green screen. Okay, mm -hmm. I can I I can tell the th I can tell the computer, uh, sorry Zoom, that I don't have a green screen and it has its own, so that if I Okay, so this is its mm -hmm. virtual green screen, right? And you can see the mm -hmm. green, like it's projecting a green behind my fingers. And if you move yeah. too much, it kind of glitch. But for someone that doesn't want to shoot their, their kitchen sink and all the dishes or mm -hmm. something behind them, like this, this is gold, as long as your system yeah. can handle the requirements. And then I tell it I have a green screen and it clears up the image. Mm -hmm. uh, but you know, green screens are cheap. Like I, this is like 10, 20 bucks. Then that's Canadians hanging a wall behind me, like drape it mm -hmm. over your couch. It's not a big deal to get into. Um, but the, again, this is like the video aspect that we are, sure. we are dabbling into now, as opposed to the podcasting mm -hmm. aspect. Now I'm just saying you could make your blanket fort green in case you ever wanted to, <laughs> you know, in case, Probably yeah, in case, you, in case you ever want to get into that. Um, so remotely, I would recommend zoom. Uh, Zencaster, okay. like I said, it does work for some people. Um, right. I would not recommend mm -hmm. Skype, though some some use it just because mm -hmm. of the tinny aspect. Um, so, how long 
have you guys been creating the Bad Heroes podcast? How long have you been creating content? Is this your first show? Is this, you know, is this your it first show? <laughs> It is. <laughs> it first is. Show. It is our first show. Um, mm-hmm. We did a little, like a like a little practice arc. Um, I would say more than a year ago now, yeah. maybe maybe a year and a half ago, we did a little practice arc. Um, and at the time, I just had Kaz and Coolness, um, and I wrote like a little shorter. I think it was maybe five episodes we did, mm-hmm. um, just to like see if we could do it. You know, we'd never done anything like this um, to figure out our recording setup. And for me to practice, you know, running the game. Uh, And we did like a little practice arc and we were like, okay, that was pretty fun, but that audio is terrible. So (laughs) what can we do to fix it? Um, So we took some time, you know, experimenting with different audio styles and also for me learning more of the rules so that it was more natural and flowy and easy. Um, And uh, And then the actual like bad hero story that you're hearing now on the podcast has been in development for well, well, I was thinking about it yeah. since the beginning, but mm-hmm. I think we've been recording it for probably more than a year now. We recorded, um, I think, the first four episodes, and then we had to take a break because um, one of our players um, had some life stuff, and so we had to take a bit of a break, and then we came back. So we've been recording it on and off for a year, and mm-hmm. now we're kind of recording it uh, in yeah. force. And so we, we've got like a backlog of recorded sessions that we're slowly <laughs> editing through, you know, uh-huh. turning into episodes and then. No, no, that, that is the way to yeah. go. You do not want to get behind that type of thing. Uh, yeah. it's good. <laughs> it, it can be confusing because a listener or something will make a comment or send an email and you were like, that was 10 shows ago. Uh, oh, yeah, 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 <laughs> totally. Yes, yes. No, we don't want to yeah. reveal yeah. anything about that character's meaning yeah, in this I because know. I forgot. Yeah. But, you know. <laughs> it's only, funny because we're, we're, doing, we're yeah. doing like behind the scenes cast interviews, like just like Dre interviews interviewing the, the players about their characters right now and we have to keep that in mind it's like yeah, by yeah, the yeah. time we release this interview we have to not spoil the later yeah, episodes yeah. and like just talk big about yeah. things that haven't happened yeah we yet. made some extras like that yeah. and i was recording with jake and he was like when i and i was like do not and he was like when i did the thing and i was like yes good but <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> i talked to because that makes an in-depth interview you just speak vaguely <laughs> yeah. about your characters <laughs> yes good very good no he, he was talking about something else but, no that's uh, that's yeah. great so uh how many different shows you have you just have that intro we have we, have, we can look forward mm-hmm. to a behind the scenes look um mm-hmm. funny that is exactly how attack of opportunity got started is we were just interviewing ourselves as a behind the scenes yeah. bonus content then we yeah. named the show and started talking to people that gave us free music other content mm-hmm. creators and, cool. and and now like the guys are like oh this is cool just keep going so I'm like, okay, you know, and I just run around. <laughs> so I'm running all over Twitter, just you know, ah, your show looks very interesting. You know how it, you know, this is a, mm-hmm. so I I know why I I reached out to you guys and picked your show. I would like our listeners to know and the audience to know what do you believe sets your show apart? What's different about Bad Heroes? The approach, the angle, the story. What's unique? Because I really love this about your show. <laughs> um, I feel like we really come at the concept from a lighthearted um, kind of comedy, we don't really take ourselves too seriously mm-hmm. kind of perspective. And I, I, I can't imagine doing it any other way with the players I have. Um, that's that's just how they play the game. You know, mm-hmm. they're very, are we very talk- funny, very Are light. we talking like Mel Brooks parody? Or are we talking like <laughs> just something, a sort of light Python, you know, take it as you will kind of? <laughs> kind of, uh, what, what would you say? Well, like I guess like some of like the spiritual inspiration for the show, like kind of comes from Good Omens. Good Omens, um, Gallivant. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Gallivant, definitely very, very on brand. Um, uh, the Good Place is like a comedy show I like, you know, mm-hmm. just kind of, um, yeah. I so that like, even though the theme, like the theme in the world can be kind of dark, but like the, the player actions in it and the mood and tone is just funny. Yeah, yeah it, I feel like Okay. No, sorry. No, I was gonna say, Gallivant is that 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 really sets it off in my imagination. If you guys haven't yes. checked out Gallivant on Netflix, go ahead. I mean, like the bit oh, with the so king funny, and yeah. he's got his little lizard. He's like, not a real lizard, Richard. Is this is going on? <laughs> it's a dragon. <laughs> it's a dragon. Um, uh, or like yeah, uh, it, Darkness Rising, the fans that made their own. Have you guys ever seen that? No. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, you could, I guess we okay. need to. You have to. The audience has to drop everything. Go to YouTube. Okay. Find, okay, find, bye. Find, find So I, I'm GM Jeff, and I've been speaking with, and they've left. They, they actually left. The, no, no, no. They no, 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 um, no it, it's, um, it's, it's, it's a, a story about a GM that's trying to publish his own adventure. And the players are all over the map and everything. But the cool thing about it is when they start playing, they, because it's a video, because it's a movie, you actually get to see the players dressed up and portraying their characters. Mm-hmm. So 
they do lots of different parody jokes. And when you see this little geeky guy that fantasizes about his hot math teacher and he sketches her in math and then he plays a sorceress and they get the math teacher actress to play his character <laughs> in the game in this hot red dress is fun. But when he keeps breaking character and doing cringy stuff and they put the little dude all Wallowitz in a dress... And he's running around, you know, doing a bunch of stuff. It's freaking hilarious. Um, and that's just like, that's just tip of the iceberg. This is not like I'm not uh, ditching, bending or promoting any sort of um, gender issue. It's just the way that I thought it through about, yeah, yeah, I guess if you were a player and you're, you know, you're, you could be anything you want. You could be a creature. You could be sure. a person. You'd be anything you want. And then you, you wreck it by being yourself. You know, and the, the way they portray it is funny. Anyway, you got to watch this mm -hmm. good stuff. Um, cool. How they distract the paladin so they can go, do, you know, borderline, <laughs> uh, you know, not nice things, 10 PCs, all, all kinds of stuff. Um, so with one show, and you guys have got a year in, you know, do you guys <laughs> actually yeah. attend conventions, gatherings? You know, where can fans meet you? We haven't been to anything yet. Um, mm -hmm. We want to start going to conventions and yeah. stuff like that. Um, we've just been, we've only we published, I think, like seven episodes now. So we've only mm -hmm. been putting out, we've only been publishing the content for, I don't know. Since what July. Is, so since July. About three months. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, so we're, we're very new to the scene. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, even though we've been sort of like working at it um, behind the scenes for a while. Yeah. But mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, we really want to go to conventions. Um, we don't have any planned yet, but yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, that is that is on yes. the agenda. We will um, we will choose our. But our for now, you can find us virtually. Uh, we're we're pretty active on Twitter. Mm -hmm. uh, our handle is at Bad Heroes Cast. Yep, on Twitter and Facebook as well. Yeah, yeah. Right now, you can meet us on the internet. <laughs> Nowhere yeah. else. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, no. no we, we, so we find you on Twitter. We, we find you on Facebook. Mm -hmm. um, yep. Uh, direct direct emails tell you guys how great and inspiring you are at, at badheroescast at gmail.com yep. yep. um, <clears throat> we're going to discuss merchandising with a real money in the podcast is, you know type of thing mm, um, yes. making t-shirts and stuff because I I totally want a bad heroes t-shirt I love I love the gra uh. I love the graphic of the multicolored snake uh, Ooh, that, that yeah. class rising nice. up and it's it really sets a tone for um, not bad at being heroes not evil heroes, <laughs> but sure. like the logo represent. You know, the, it it really gets you thinking, and it, it does what it's supposed to do. The logo makes you think about the podcast. Going, hmm, this could mean so many things. I want to know more, <laughs> and they and they oh. tune in. It's it's a real. I've got it right here. Actually, your logo is up here on the um, oh, cool. on the board for the for the vodcast. So, um, some quick personal questions. Um, yeah, mm -hmm. I love talking to gamers from all walks of life from every mm -hmm. pay grade and from every country. And I'm curious what you guys do for a living when you're not mm -hmm. creating, you know, what pays the bills right now until the podcast can. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, so I'm actually a media editor in real life. Uh, and so that's where I kind of transferred over the skills um, into editing the podcast. And I gotta say, actually, through editing the podcast, it, it, it created transfer sk transferable skills back to my real life job. So it's been like very, mutually beneficial for everything yeah and yeah. she i mean it's really been she's really good at editing audio so it's really we're really lucky to have her um yeah. yep um wow i do yeah lucky yeah no lady. no yeah, 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 yeah um i uh i used to work as a gis analyst um and now i uh do freelance um short story writing and art sorry gis gis uh, geographic information systems uh like Maps. I used to make fancy maps. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, oh, right. Okay. Yeah. The topic. Okay. Sorry. No, I actually, I, um, yeah. one of the guys that introduced me to Pathfinder actually does the same thing. He was contracting uh, and doing that, mm -hmm. that kind of thing. So look at that. Uh -huh. Small world. Yeah. Even here in Canada, map making, well, mm -hmm. uh, duh, you're making maps. Yeah, things to maps. Sorry. Things to, yeah, <laughs> I, I totally missed that. She's, she's, a, she's ahead of the game, ladies and gentlemen. She's definitely, definitely ahead of me. I'm just not awake this morning. Um, so, no, you're so tell me about your latest project. You guys mentioned something. I'm going to assume, unless you've got something else cool on the horizon to surprise us with, that this uh, behind-the-scenes interview would be your latest thing you guys are going to release? Uh, yeah, yeah. We're Go ahead, Ben. Okay, yeah. So we, we recently launched a Patreon for our show. Um, and so we've been just brainstorming all different sorts of bonus content uh, to release to our supporters. And... And the um, like, a, a lot of people have written in. Mostly, like friends of, of us who, who listen to the show have written in with questions about like, how did you do this? What was the inspiration for that? Um, and we thought that like, 
doing these sort of bonus Q and A type of episodes would just be a fun little extra. Yeah, and mm -hmm. it was a fun excuse for me to uh, to ask my players questions about their characters that I, I actually didn't know the answer to. Um, so we've only recorded oh, one cool. so far. Yeah, it was a good time. Uh, we'll put it on Patreon soon, and then I'll record the other, or I'll uh, interview the other three players, and then we're probably gonna do like a spooky Halloween extra mm -hmm, with everybody with, with the Q and A. Just oh, I, I know it's October, and I'm like, damn it, I should have been running Strahd. I should have been. You, know, you just get to it. No, no, <laughs> oh, man. I'm, I'm not talking about the Curse of Strahd, the fifth edition, the which like oh, everyone's okay. done. I'm talking sure. for like the last 10, 20 years. Every time Halloween comes around, the gaming buddies at the regular table, it's like, oh, we should have been doing like Castle Ravenloft in September, mm -hmm. so that we would get to some kind of big story arc reveal around halloween mm -hmm. and then play you know type of thing but you get caught up on whatever you're doing and whatever you're playing that you know the halloween bug kind of hits too late um mm -hmm. but this year we're actually going to release a sci-fi horror we have a brand new gm Ooh. rob hammond that's going to do starfinders adventure path frequency of screams mm -hmm. we're calling it static uh -huh. fear and we're already prepping with some help shout out to the guys at uh, starship and pala podcasts that already do starfinder and are giving us a huge leg up and heads you know um because uh, <clears throat> just between you and me uh rob didn't realize it was seventh level and we've never played starfinder <laughs> we have uh -huh. like we have four weeks to figure out first third sixth and then oh we're seventh <laughs> level and here we go and we launch you know don't, don't tell our sponsor we actually got sponsorship for that too fantasy grounds we're, basic, you know, we're basically gods yeah this is, like, is, this, is this is this under attack of opportunity or is this under a different umbrella uh, well, every, um, all of our shows are produced by Dicewise Entertainment and fall under the Rollmongers Podcast Network banner. Okay. Um, we're getting into twitching and live streaming. And mm -hmm. that show is going to be a Sunday night live stream at 8 EST. And we're calling it Static Fear. But the video will be uploaded to our YouTube. I will pull the audio personally and make a podcast of it. You know, that, cool. kind, that kind of thing. And we got a brand new GM besides me. Very excited about that. Um, and uh, yeah, and we were supposed to be doing um, the evil campaign, the Pathfinder uh, Hell's Vengeance. But that's been, we're trying to get to it. You know, so many things going on. Anyway, um, but we're supposed to be talking about your future, not my future. Uh, just, I just start, I, mean, I, I love know. Halloween and it just, you know, it just sets me off going, ooh, I got <laughs> such big plans we're for this one, you know. We're so excited because it was just a total coincidence. I mean, we weren't paying attention as, as October snuck mm -hmm. up, but we're like releasing episodes as our characters are getting into like the vampire part of the story. Um, and we did, it wasn't planned, but like it's now vampire time and it's October. Mm -hmm. And I'm very pleased with that. Accidental, oh, okay. So uh, are, are, are you running now? You're running Pathfinder. Which edition are you running? First edition. Yeah. And are you running? Um, is there a specific content or are you guys homebrew? Homebrew. Homebrew. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. So you can drop the vampire content of the story. You know, you you could hedge it up a bit. You know, but uh, well, this is what people are thinking. But if you think about it, if you you know, if you're writing your own story and you're doing your own homebrew, there has to be a certain logic and flow. You know, if it's sure. if it's not vampire time, you may have to wait for Thanksgiving and and, and they're all <laughs> wearing football helmets or something. You know, that type of thing. And yes, exactly. People, Hunt the turkey, people, it's people make the yeah. Well, people make the mistake that homebrew means oh, I do what I want when I want. It's like, well, no. If you're telling a good story, right. there has to be a you know, there has to be a logical mm -hmm. ebb and flow. And if mm -hmm. they don't get to that, or the players just kind of left turn, you're like, oh, we're mm -hmm. going this way. You start uh -huh. you start rapidly painting the world out that way. You know, right, that, right, you right, know, right. that kind of thing. Um, so. We can find you on Twitter. We can find you on Facebook. We can find yep. you on, I'd like to talk a little bit of the technical aspect. I didn't know that for a brand new podcast like yourself, that there are a couple things you could do to lessen the cost. And Anchor FM has got to be one of the only podcasting hosts that'll give you an RSS feed for free. Mm -hmm. You know, there are terms and conditions, but um, most people like myself pay the 150 a year or the 34 a month or the 16 mm -hmm. a month to put up a certain amount of gigabyte, you know, and go with SoundCloud as we do. Uh, I highly recommend Spreaker because it gives us Spotify, iTunes, a lot of the big ones. It taps into all those without too much trouble. Um, but if you're really not sure if you're willing to give up golf, beer, Xbox, and all those things that like take your allowance and dump it all into something like I'm doing, you know, um, Anchor FM, how has your experience with them been so far? Uh, overall, yeah. it's been pretty good. I would say the only downside to Anchor FM that I've encountered so far is that you do lose your access to analytics on the Apple podcast platform. 
you can claim your feed on other the other places it distributes to. You can claim it on uh, Spotify, Radio Public, Podbean, but Apple is the only one where it seems to run into a wall. So we have no idea how many subscribers we have on Apple. Uh, or who they are yes. or anything. But, uh, but we just, you know, we assume. But we assume they're there. there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but, uh, I mean, besides mm -hmm. that. But other than that, yeah, uh, yeah, like there hasn't really been a gotcha moment. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, there's that that sort of axiom on the internet that if you're not paying for the product, then you are the product type of thing. But, I, I, you know, yeah, yeah. perhaps. It's uh, just a really low barrier entry sort of way to get into it. Yeah. Yeah, come on, yeah. people give them a break. It's free. What do you, what do you ask? Like, podcasts are, <laughs> most podcasts are free, and it's, there's such high standards yeah. and so much money mm -hmm. that you could sink into it. Um, but some sure. tricks, of, tricks of the trade for starting out. I mean, um, you guys have obviously had some spit and polish put in and some pre-thinking before you guys launched, uh, which I think is a great idea because if you just kind of like, Yee, we're trying this and we don't know what we're doing, but we're having fun. Yeah. People here, a bunch of people just having fun with with crap audio, blah, 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 right? There's got to be something to right. more. Like, you know, no offense, but a lot of these podcasts are, are coming out a dime a dozen. Gone are the days when Adventure Zone was one of the first on the market, hit some good sure. algorithms, mm -hmm. and their their unique chemistry which holds you to them makes mm -hmm. up for some of the on and off in and out you know audio kind of thing um someone like ourselves we're so fussy about audio after having mm -hmm. some trouble with our very first star wars podcast that fans still say i got an email like three days ago from a new fan going <laughs> i listened to your star wars podcast it's great you know, but the audio, and I'm like, oh, yeah, no. please. It'll haunt you. It's, it's haunt you forever. You, you, yeah. you can only get that first exposure once. Mm -hmm. And yeah, like we, I said, I think, I think we put more time into the first episode, like editing the first episode and cleaning up the audio than in anything else. We, I mm -hmm. mean, it mm -hmm. took, it was, yeah. we put a lot of work into that because we only get one chance. Yeah. Um, and like I said, I've I've ruined so many chances for our network with being overexcited and, and and too much of an eager beaver and gone after big names, small names, any names, very spammy, very like look at me, you know, different thing. I'm so excited to be here. And all people see is you in a line of a whole bunch of spammers going, look at me. And it took me a while to realize it's like, oh, that's how they don't see the excited Jeff. They just see a guy that's just shouting in caps for no good reason. <laughs> uh, even my name in Twitter is in caps, and it was like I was looking at the I was looking at the feeds, <laughs> and it's like this pod, that pod, try this pod, try this pod, shout it to this pod. I'm like, well, how do I make mine stand out? And one guy had capped one of the three words in his title, and I'm like, mm -hmm. oh, okay. Well, Rollmonger says this. I will cap GSO at GM underscore Jeff Ball, but it's all in caps. You're like, I'll cap everything. I did. <laughs> cap it all. <laughs> I, I did. I did. And, you know, people are looking at this. It's like, blah, blah, blah. blah. Why is Jeff shouting at us? Excitement. Oh, yeah. Yeah. This is excitement. Sheer excitement. Like, excitement. Sheer excitement. You got you to gotta know me to love me. And grow on you like a crystal fungus. Um, <laughs> but um, for you guys and for anyone else that we talk to, I always enjoy listening and hearing about your first steps how you're excited because you're getting going like a year in, you know, what have you got planned for the future? And, you know, remember us little guys when you're at the top and all that kind of, all that, all that, all that kind of thing. Um, no, we will be here interviewing everyone that piques our interest, big, small, medium, tall, round, you name it, you know, long after you guys are famous and have forgotten you know, the Jeff who, yes. Yeah, so I think that was the guy that screamed on the internet with caps. I, very, very, very optimistic. No, 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 no pictures. No come. We don't want to talk to him. Um, that no, kind of no, no. Yes. Um, your your technical side. So you guys are going after uh, Anchor FM, but you can't track it on yep. iTunes. That's good to know. Um, mm -hmm. You said you guys are all queuing remotely. So I'm assuming everyone has a different, like you said, you have a, a decent Twitch guy. Yet a lot of you guys are starting out with different types of microphones. You know, what? Yeah. So what's your, what's your best and worst mic on air? I'm just kind of curious. <laughs> I don't know what I don't know what coolness has. He has something something mm -hmm. professional. Um, mm -hmm. The rest of us pretty much exclusively have um, blue snowball mics, which mm -hmm. are about I think fifty bucks. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, plug I think and Kaz might have a blue yeti. Yeah, Kaz has a blue yeti. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Kaz and coolness have better audio. Um, probably mm -hmm. if we if we can, the first thing we'd upgrade is my mic because <laughs> I talk a lot in the show. Yeah, yeah, um, no, no, they, they they're what they call a plug and play USB mic. Uh, yeah. They're affordable and they're a great start. And a lot of YouTubers and stuff use use the yeti. You know, uh, that's where I started. 
I had a snowball. Mm -hmm. I had a Yeti. Now, for different technical reasons, I ditched both of them for a couple of things, but just being overly fussy. Um, for, like I said, now there's nothing wrong with using these microphones. You got to start somewhere, and you mm -hmm. don't want to blow $200 on a audio technica 2035 mm -hmm. that requires phantom power which mm -hmm. is another 50 to 200 bucks depending on what kind of setup you have here out of the gate to decide that it's the electric guitar you bought your kid that sits in a closet kind of thing mm -hmm. sure. you know what i mean um, and you get got a way that well my first impression though will be the cheaper audio mm -hmm. is it you know type of thing so content yeah. presentation attitude the mm -hmm. the tone that you yeah. guys have, you know, should carry you through the baby steps of the audio. You know, I'm not here to say you got to come out with mega decent audio, whatever, you know, the editing and, you know, as long as you guys are consistent to type of thing, there are so many podcasts that sound, um, shall we say new ish compared mm -hmm. to some and are doing great because it's they're people are genuinely having a good time around a microphone and everyone wants that experience. Everybody oh, wants that, like that, that sort of, um, you know, I was there at the table. I want to meet these people, mm -hmm. you know, that type of thing. Yeah. For, I feel like for what we lack in good equipment, we really put a lot of time in, in post to clean up. Um, everyone is in their own file, so we can clean up crosstalk, which mm -hmm. helps a lot. Um, and we do a lot to like eliminate the room noise, um, mm -hmm. after, after the fact. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like mm -hmm, times but, uh, are times are tough, people. You know, you can't dump yeah. hundreds and hundreds of dollars to get everybody in line. If only there was some way. If only there was some way the fans could help. Is there? A, oh, well, right. <laughs> Patreon.com. So, <gasps> what is? What? Find bad you want here. Us to have. Yeah, it would be better equipment. You know, pay up. Mm -hmm. No, no. Seriously. Um, what is your handle at Patreon? It ne it never uh, hurts to make it, the fans aware that if they want to help, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so on Patreon, we're at patreon.com slash badheroes. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. And we're so putting a lot of stuff up there, too, which is fun. I, I really enjoy making stuff for it because yeah. I like making stuff for the mm -hmm. show. So, yep. Yeah. There, there's like little digital extras. There's GM's notes that we just started putting oh, yeah. out with mm -hmm. each episode. Um, you know, sometimes um, I'll whip up like little graphics uh, that, you know, uh, are for in game objects that we, that the players see when they're playing, and then we'll share that on Patreon too. We're very excited. Yeah. So we tend to, we like to, <laughs> we love to make stuff for the show, and mm -hmm. it's just a nice play. We're like, oh, we have a place to put this now because we were going to make it anyway because we're very Yeah, excited. yeah, no. And people yeah. understand how helpful Patreon could be, like even a $5 subscription. It's like, come on, you pay 15 bucks for WoW. Yeah. You can't throw these guys, you're, you're enjoying all their content, and your five bucks goes together with, uh, you just can't wrap people's heads around the idea. They're like, oh, it's five bucks. It's not going to help. They have a couple hundred listeners. I'm sure somebody will it help. It's like, so no, much. it's got to be you because mm -hmm. a handful of yous, right, turn the $15 patron into a $70 patron. It's something even mm -hmm. that minuscule is like, hey, look at this money. What are we going to Well, they're going to put in the podcast. They're going to up their microphones. They're going to up their content. Yeah. And you get to listen. You're going to listen to them. They're a great show. So why not, you know, why not help them make them better? This, this is the type of thing where, you know, it's not, it's a slippery slope because you're kind of going, you know, send us your cash. You know, we, we need a party. We need another Senator's Guild. If you want. If, no, no, come on. Like so many podcasters are taking the time, sweat, tears and their own cash and dumping it into a big fat maybe. And your money isn't like, ha, 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 those fools, now I'll retire. <laughs> no, it's like, ah, ha, 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 look at all that credit card debt. Well, that'll put a little chip in it. Thanks, guys. Thank you so much. Appreciate you know, that. yeah, that kind of thing. I mean, I mean that's, where we're, that's where we're at. <laughs> we're just kind of like, yeah. oh, guys. We, 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 um, we have a running joke. Um, our Patreon is mostly family and cast members. And it's like, you know, you guys are all pay to play now, you know, to help us, you know, that, 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 <laughs> that kind of thing. Um, and we don't expect fans you know we're we're thrilled just that people listen to our stuff that uh, mm -hmm. the odd email and stuff we get throws us over the mill moon puts us so much inspiration i mean when's the last time you guys got a listener even just asking a technical question a stranger emails bad heroes directly and you get it and you open gmail and it's just like oh <gasps> You know, somebody's talking, somebody's looking, hi, hello. You know, you, just, like, you guys still get that. You got, do you guys still get that? I still get that even yeah, after three years. We, just, we, like, got, we got a, like a nice review from a total stranger on iTunes and we were like, ah, yeah, 
Yeah. 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 Yeah very friendly. Twitter's been super sweet. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know what we were expecting. I mean, we're new, so I think maybe we, mm -hmm. we were bracing ourselves for inevitable, like, wave of negativity, and maybe it will come. But for now, I mean, everyone has been really positive and really nice. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. No, I guess so it, the really worst cool. thing would be crickets. Just no response, no hits, yeah. no one no one sees, no yeah. one cares. You know, it's like, could, could someone, sure. at least, someone at least someone hate us, you know. Someone, and please, someone somebody, somebody just, you know, at least you're paying attention, you know. I mean, uh -huh. I, I, that, that's what I do. If I ever rolled up on a convention, someone came up and went, Jeff, you suck. I'd be like, thanks for listening. <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, like, yeah. you know, yeah. in episode 12, you were horrible. So you've listened to 12 episodes. And where are you going? Yeah. I'll, I'll start following so them around. You have heard of me. Oh, yeah. Just, <laughs> good, just, good. just cling. Yeah. Just cling to the yeah. haters. Like, get off me, man. I hate your show. But you listen. What exactly did you not like about 12? Let's talk about it in depth. I've got nothing yeah. to do. Oh, yeah. You know, yeah. like it just. You know, tell you, tell me more about what you didn't like. About yeah, exa you. exactly. <laughs> yeah, I get that a lot. But anyway, um, we've been talking with I want to say Silver Tongue, but it's it's Silver Two. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. <laughs> Your next, Silver Tongue. Yes, Terrifying. We were talking with Dre and Leanne uh, from the Bad Heroes podcast. They are on Anchor FM, but Anchor FM does feed a bunch of you know. Where else can we find you? We can find you on iTunes iTunes, Spotify, pretty, pretty much. much anywhere you get your podcast. And we also have a website, badheroescast.com, um, that links to all those places. Yep. Great. Mm -hmm. And and now yeah. you share a link to this show and people can learn a little bit more about you. Um, yeah. And and again, a talk of opportunity. Thank you so much for being on the show, guys, and putting up with our attacks on your person, as well as all my little <laughs> anecdotes. And we will see you next time on Attack. Thank you so much. Thanks for having us. Of opportunity. Bye. Okay. <laughs>